Good afternoon. I'm going to talk about uh, um, something that is um, the result of a period of several months and several years, I would say, from the moment we started to talk about this and to the moment we started to deploy it. Um, some uh, four times ago, we started to talk to some people of the um, Open Document Foundation about having a development dashboard for uh, LibreOffice and all the other projects around the Open um, Document Foundation umbrella. And um, uh, basically, we're a company that are producing free software for doing this kind of analysis. I'm going to present it later. So at some point, we reached an, an agreement and we deployed the first version of the uh, dashboard, which is with now it's online, and I'm going to tell you the URL right now. So there are two talks now by myself. One is this one, which is basically for explaining how the dashboard works. And the second one is probably more interesting because it's about how they work, they, they work uh, sorry, how the dashboard um, is done internally and how you can query directly all the data. Because right now we have for three data sources of your development, we have all the information stored into a nice elastic search database that can be queried in any way you may want. So that means that probably um, some of the metrics that some of you could be interested in having are only a couple of um, SQL, uh, sorry, elastic search queries away from you. So let's go to the uh, real thing. Um, first of all, I'm going to very briefly talk about some context about myself and, and the company, and then I'm going to talk about the dashboard. And I'm going to spend the first 20 minutes talking about the dashboard. So the dashboard is online, as I said. Well, let me go and briefly show me. That's, my, that's myself, even when it doesn't look like. Uh, I'm both at the university and at the company, so I've been working in software metrics for a while. But my approach to software metrics is not looking at the source code, but looking at the activity and the processes. That's what the, the, the dashboard is about. So some time ago, we decided to start a company, and the company is basically producing and using only free software. And uh, that's what we use it to deploy the, the, the dashboard. And the dashboard is here. So here you have the, the link. You can test the thing live if you want. And uh, uh, if you try it with a phone, it doesn't render well, but uh, try it with a tablet or with um, um, a laptop. It's dashboard.documentfoundation.org. So it was updated like yesterday, so all the, of the information, um, I guess it's um, pretty up to date. And um, there are several views for the uh, information. First of all, we have like three um, rows in the main entry uh, point, where which each one corresponds to one of the data sources. You have Git, uh, you have Gurit, and you have a uh, bacilla. And uh, then on the uh, left, you have numbers, which are summaries of what's happening in the project right now. And then you have two columns. This is about activity. So that's commits, code reviews, or tickets. And this is about uh, persons. So that's uh, authors of commits. That's uh, people uh, starting code review processes. And this is uh, people uh, opening uh, tickets. And then you have some summaries on the right. The affiliation information is probably not very accurate yet, but still you can have an idea. So we use some heuristics based on the email address, which means that if basically if you are using a Gmail address, for instance, you are in the uh, unknown uh, part. If you are using a corporate email address, usually you are in, in the part of the pie. Um, let's go to the real thing, which is over here. OK, nice. Um, as I said, this is the main. Um, overview of the project and uh, uh, first of all everything is uh, actionable so you can click and filter and uh, move things so for instance you can rearrange the icons somehow you can remove one of them if you don't want to see it you can also uh, enlarge them if you want to make more clearly what's happening and stuff like that and uh, of course if you don't save uh, anything happens uh, for the next user and you cannot save so no problem for that. Um, you can filter and, uh, and staff. So uh, let me go to the Git uh, panel, and I'm going to show you how to use it very briefly. So this thing that you see on the top are filters, so those red boxes. So we have two default filters for filtering out empty commits. I mean, those commits that don't touch any file, and bots. For bots, we have some heuristics. I don't know how good they are for this dashboard, but basically they can be uh, amended with a manual effort. Um, in any case, uh, filters can be uh, actioned on. You can just uh, click here and basically it um, removes the filter, which means that now the information you see once the thing is done is basically uh, everything like it was before, but without the filter. So I'm going to activate it again. 
And uh, you can filter by organization so that if you want to uh, have a look at what Red Hat is doing in these repositories, you can very easily go there, click and filter. And now the thing is the same, but now for Red Hat activity. And you can also, of course, come to uh, any other of the, of the parts, like I want to filter on a specific repositories, for instance, this one, and I want to check specifically what's happening. And uh, well, this is the information for some of the uh, things, there is nothing. Every time you click on something, uh, a new filter appears, and filters can be removed with that by, just by clicking on the trash can, which I'm doing right now. Okay, so this is again the, the, the whole activity for the, uh, for the repository. Um, coming back to what's in the Git repository, you have information about the uh, different authors, so probably this is a bot that should be filtered. You have our organizations over time, where you can uh, have a look at the commit activity over time and look at who is performing those commits by um, affiliation. Uh, this is just curious because you know that in Git you have the local time of the commit, and uh, all that depends on how well configured the laptop of the developer is, but otherwise, well, this is basically the uh, American uh, West Coast, this is the East Coast, and later America, this is Europe and Africa, this is Asia, this is um, Australia, and so on. So you can get a first a rough idea of where your developers are. Of course, if people have UTC zero in the laptop because they travel a lot while they are here, that, that, that's why this, this pick here. Um, in any case, uh, the information for uh, Git is not, let's say, that interesting because in many cases you already have it. But if you come to worry, um, the information starts to be probably a bit more interesting. Uh, this is basically the number of uh, uh, um, code reviews over time. It seems that you started to use Gerrit intensively at some point in the last year. So we can filter out the rest of the time. So on the top, on the top right, you have a date filter. So I'm going to get with, uh, only with the staff from the last year. And uh, that's fair enough. Okay. Now you can see uh, the code reviews, uh, so, uh, sorry, the, the code review information as you have it now. And uh, if you look at this one, it is by status. If you want to, to learn what status they are, here you have new, abandoned, and merge. So you have some new them here. So you have some abandoned all, all over the place, and most of them are merged. That's a um, uh, number of code reviews by, by, by month. Of course, you can again click, and you can maybe focus on the currently open, I mean new um, code reviews, and you can see how you have new code reviews from last year, but most of them are um, well, pretty recent from the last, I don't know, three to, to, to six months. I'm going to remove that one. Then you can, of course, do the same for, for uh, repositories, so that you are interested in what's happening in the dictionaries repository, for instance. This is a code review activity there. And again, you can come down and see a bit more detailed information like the number of patches per change set. So how many people, how many times developers have to resubmit until they get accepted. Those are numbers that start to give you an idea about how efficient the process is. Because you know, if you have a lot of cycles, that basically means that while well, the new versions that developers are sending are not good enough, they have to be reviewed again, they have to be asked again for a new version, and that's not much efficient. You can filter by persons, and you can filter again by, by organizations. Um, I'm going to skip uh, some of the um, um, menu entries for lack of time, but you can go later. Let me check Garrett Backlog, because it's probably the, the most interesting one for developers. This is the current backlog of Garrett issues that you have now, right now. So to begin with, you can look at the time structure of those. So this is um, um, uh, time, and this is the number of uh, new ten sets. I mean, ten sets in the new state. So, as usual, most of them are recent, but uh, the year starts here, so you can see, this is by week now, so you can see how you still have some that are two to three months old, and you have some that are very old. In many cases, you may be interested in learning which ones they are to go and look at them. That's what you have on the left. So on the left, you can go and see, okay, I have this backlog, and I want to learn what's happening with this specific. For instance, this has been sitting here since March last year. So you can go and click and go directly to Gerrit and see what's happening with this one and maybe uh, deciding to, I don't know, close or abandon it or something. Um, so this is probably interesting stuff 
for Lenin per repository, uh, what kind of, uh, let's say, jobs do you still have pending from the code review point of view? Of course, you can also filter by who is submitting or which organization is submitting or stuff like that so that you can uh, um, um, zero on the, the kind of information you may want. For issues, I mean, for Parkzilla, we have similar information. Here you have all the tickets in the current state. And uh, I'm going to remove the legend so that you can see it better. I'm mean, going to enlarge it a bit. Uh, with Vaxilla, we have some trouble with data retrieval, which means that the data is updated only up to November. But still, you can, you can get the idea of how you can see the structure of all the tickets right now, how many of them were closed, when you have a ticket sitting for a long time in such and such state, and so on. Again, you can, do, you can see the same by, you know, organizations, projects, submitters, and staff. Uh, 